Welcome to the Inside Silverstone podcast, a business-focused podcast covering all things tech, engineering and innovation. Hosted by me, Chris Broom, a huge tech, motorsport and gaming fan, and also the owner of Longhurst, a firm of lifestyle financial planners and independent financial advisors located in Silverstone, Northamptonshire. This is a series of unscripted and unpolished conversations with leading business owners, thought leaders and high-tech talent where we discuss their experiences within the Silverstone business and motorsport region. We will also be asking them to share their knowledge, insight and their thoughts on the future just for you. If you're looking to learn more about the Silverstone high growth region and commercially connect with like-minded peers, you've definitely come to the right place. Welcome to Inside Silverstone. Welcome to the next edition of Inside Silverstone. My name is Chris Broom and I'm your host. Today I am delighted to welcome to the show Dan Roberts, who is a partner and business expert, business advisor at Cotton Chartered Accountants in Northampton. Dan, welcome to the show. Yeah, hi Chris. Thanks for the introduction. Good to be here. Great. Well, thanks for coming on, Dan, especially as we are in obviously COVID lockdown. So, uh, you know, we've decided to, to releases not only as a podcast but also as a as a video so thanks for agreeing to come on and as we were both literally joking before this started we both have the faces for radio um so uh we will we will uh, muck our way through this as best as we can so dan um what is customary within within each episode each interview that we do we like to give our wonderful dear listeners a quick career background um to um, help sort of explain and shape the journey that, that you've been on to get where you are and, uh, and obviously do what you do. Um, yeah, the, the sort of great news is that this is a really short piece because you are basically and have been pretty much working for Cotton's accountants for all of your career, pretty much. Does that sound yeah. about right? Yeah, no, that, that is right, Chris. Yeah, I mean, um, I went to university, I was up in Leeds, did a degree in economics finish that and then as most people do you float around you know a little bit you know um got a job then in in recruitment um only really because it was quite a nice salary and sure. at, at that point in time while well, i thought yeah yeah i, I like a bit of that um spent probably eight months there then actually i thought i, I need it i want a career yeah I actually want something that i could see, 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 see me through and have, and have a career and have some challenges within it um, and I decided to write to all the accounts of firms in Northampton. Um, one of those firms then who actually answered uh, my, my letter with my CV was Cotton's. Yeah. Um, and the rest is, is history, really. So started off as a trainee and now we're a partner within the firm. Well, I think that's just a fantastic lesson there, full stop, isn't it? For any uh, students or anybody that's even considering a career change uh, at whatever age. Uh, you know, especially now where uh, people are being made redundant or furloughed or, you know, considering uh, their options. Nothing wrong with writing letters, emails and sending yeah. it out within a business region, uh, following it up presumably afterwards to make sure it's been received. And you never know, you know, 10, 20 years later from, you know, from trainee and sitting your exams, becoming an accountant and a specialist to then partner and, and who, who knows what happens in the future. Yeah, no, it's exactly right. You know, actually, to be a bit speculative sometimes works and actually, yeah, paid off. Yeah, no, good, bravo. And, and so for those that haven't come across Cottons before, talk to us about Cottons. So, you know, where, where are you based? And, you know, what, what's a typical client look like for and a business owner look like for Cottons? Yeah, fair enough. So uh, Cottons itself has been around for about 35 years. You know, we're established in Northampton, Rugby, Daventry, Milton Keynes, down in London. Um, we have about 80 within the team, professionals, working with a you know, wide variety of clients, you know, mostly SMEs, and that's what we specialise in. Um, but, you know, we do personal tax returns um, all the way through to looking after subsidiaries for you know, billion dollar groups, you know, basically in the UK, and everything else in, in between. Um, along that along that route, um, so yeah, typically the SME market. And what what about you? So presumably you're working with that same broad range. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my own client base, the people that I look after. So in the main, I'm looking at people within the motor industry. So various motor factors, big groups within there. Uh, people within manufacturing, 
uh, people involved in uh, professional services, around some of the auxiliary services that, that feed into to motor and manufacturing services. Um, so, you know, again, quite a diverse mix, quite a diverse set of people uh, within there uh, across a variety of industry types. And I guess that's probably one of the reasons why Cottons and also you joined the Silverstone Technology Cluster, which, uh, which is, uh, for those that are listening to this for the first time, is a, is a specialist uh, business and technology community in the heart of Northamptonshire and uh, based on Silverstone Race Circuit, uh, which is where my business, Longhurst, is also based. So your, your, your flavour, your specialism in uh, sort of motorsport stroke uh, manufacturing fits neatly there, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, personally, I have an interest in motorsport anyway, and I'm a bit of a geek in the fact that I like to know how things are made, and I'm interested in those type of processes and all those sort of bits. So actually, it comes hand in hand to work and to be part of, you know, something like the STC and to try and work and partner with firms who, who, who are providing, you know, innovation, you know, in various industries, you know, cutting edge technologies. You know, I quite, I quite like that. You know, it's quite good, you know, and to be able to work with those those sort of firms offering some services like say I would do tax credits to help support those along, along the way. Um, yeah, it's going to get really interesting. And presumably you've got clients based on Silverstone already, is that right? Yes, we do. Yeah, so we work with a number of clients there already. Um, we've got a couple of contacts already based within STC, um, like yourself, Chris, yeah, we work with. Um, so it's a, a quite a vibrant community down there. And it's good to be a part of it. Good. Um, yeah, really good. And so, um, Obviously, present day, it's now April the 6th, 2020. And so clearly we're in the middle of, uh, it's now week three, beginning of the week three of lockdown. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got a lot of business owners as clients, uh, a number of based on Silverstone Park, but also just geographically all over the country. I know how they're feeling uh, about their personal wealth, but also their business. Mm. Um I mean, you must be at really at the sharp end of it as a as, a, as an accountant, stroke uh, business advisor. Yeah. What's it like out there at the moment? Yeah, I mean, these are these are unprecedented times at the moment. I mean, I don't think any of us have seen anything quite like this uh, in our lives, and um, it is it's difficult. You know, there are people right at the sharp end at the moment, and um, you know, at the, it's difficult to see some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we've had a lot of good news that's come out of the government in terms of what relief that they offer. Mm. Um, however, there are delays in um, actually seeing some physical cash come through. Mm. Um, and do we know how long this is going to last for? You know, we're yeah two two weeks in of a three week lockdown. Um, I think that's going to be an, at least another four weeks, you know, at least another eight weeks potentially. Mm. Um, until we start getting back to a little bit of normality. But obviously that puts a lot of uncertainty in terms of, you know, what's, what does a business look like mm. in there? Mm. You know, some, some sectors uh, are facing the challenge a little bit more or, or weathering the challenge um, a bit easier than others. Um, but, you know, it, it will have a big ripple effect throughout the whole economy. Um, so I think we're, it, we're going to see the implication of this probably for, you know, years to come. And so presumably part of the, the reason there's a delay is that the government have to create infrastructure, systems and processes to be able to uh, assess and then issue uh, whatever benefit it is, whether it be to an individual or to a business. Presumably that's the reason for the delay. Yeah, I mean, it, that, that, will be, that certainly is part of the delay. You know, we're looking at the process now. Let's take furloughed workers as yeah. a good porting call with that. You know, great that the announcement has been made to, uh, for the government to cover 80% of wage costs capped at 2500 per month for an employee. Um, but actually, to be able to deliver that, you know, there needs to be systems in place, there needs to be a portal in place, you know, for them to, a, to record that information so that they can be, make the payments, cross-reference that to their own RTI payroll systems, etc., and, you know, so forth from there. So, you know, apparently they're working around the clock to be able to get those systems up and running. I can't imagine it's... Um, it's easy to do that, mm. um, you know, given the fact that there's going to be millions of people um, put onto this furlough system at some point in time. And, and so furloughing, I think a lot of people will now get, have a rough, broad idea of what furloughing is because of just the sheer volume of communications on social media and in the press. But for those that are still potentially unsure, 
what is furloughing uh, and for anybody running a business that just wants reassurance in simple terms what is it how does it work uh, you know is, is the company paying con to, continues to pay you know an income for 80 percent and then they, they could get a refund or a, a rebate from the government how does it actually work in reality yeah so just to give you know, that sort of snapshot overview of what we're looking at here i mean it's a job retention scheme you know in essence you know businesses impacted by this covid19 virus if that's causing you pressure in terms of you know actually i've got to look at staff redundancies we're saying can we can we keep the staff or the government saying can we keep the staff we will then give you a grant for 80 percent of their wage costs capped at 2500 pounds that wage cost is obviously gross includes employers national insurance and employer pension contributions under the auto enrollment scheme and if you were to do that, we will give you 80% back as a grant once this portal is up and running and um, we can send you know, fact factory um, receipts thereafter. I mean, what, what we're looking at, I mean, if we, just, if we just go back to that, so we're looking at an 80% refund then on those total um, wage costs. How quickly that's going to come to materialise goes back to the previous question, I suppose, through on there. You know, we've got, if we're taking a, a, an employee, they've got to be furloughed for three weeks. So, you know, pretty much a full month's pay we're looking at there. If we're paid weekly, you know, it can be a bit of a cash flow burden on some people. Portal's not ready yet, so we're not going to get the funds through. If we're paid monthly, we're hoping this portal's going to be open before the end of April. Payments then start to trickle through end of April, early May. Um, so I think we've just got to be very mindful of the fact that Come the end of this month, there could be a bit of a, a, a real cash um, burden on small business before these grants start to come through. And it is a, and it is a grant, so it's not something that needs to be repaid back once we get through the other side of this. Okay, what other types of funding mechanisms are there? Grant support. So what 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 does that look like? Additional grant support to businesses, um, especially those that are in different sectors like hospitality, for example. Yeah, so you know there are grants available through the local authorities, uh, and they're going to be the organisations that are taking the lead on delivering these grants. So if you're a small business and you are currently um, able to claim small business rate relief, then you'll be looking at a 10k grant from the local authority. Okay. If you're in retail, leisure, tourism, you know actually we'll be looking at a 25k grant. Um, over that period of time. Um, again, they are now starting to trickle through. Some of the local authorities are starting to um, uh, make inquiries into who they've got on their rates register, so we call it, you know, uh, and asking them to make applications. So I think we'll see those start coming through in full over the next two to three weeks. Okay, so potentially before furloughing money comes through perhaps. Hopefully, that's the, that, that's the intention. What I would suggest if anybody's got any queries is to get onto their local authority website um, to see where they're going to be pointed to. Um, not necessarily on the phone, because I think they're all understaffed anyway, and you'll probably be on the queue. But the website's usually got some decent information. Okay. Um, and what about other sort of forms of tax deferment? VAT, personally, corporately, what, 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 what types of deferments are there? Yeah, well, current VAT payments have been uh, deferred. So any VAT liability that's due for payment from uh, 20th of March, I believe it was, through to the end of June has now been deferred until the end of March 21. Okay. So that will be a bit of an ease on cash flow. I mean, we say deferred, so it's not going to disappear. We will be sure. talking about it at some point. But hopefully when we're through the other side and profits start to recover, we'll generate enough cash to be able to do that. On the personal front, okay, with our self-assessment tax payments, for those who've got any second payments on account due in July, will be postponed until January next year. So at least personally, they'll put a bit more cash in the pocket. Um, and if we have got taxes out there that people are struggling with, so corporation tax, for example, maybe you pay as you earn national insurance payments as well, you know, before we get any grants back for the furlough, um, I'd advise to, to talk to HMRC. You know, ring the business payment support line. Um, they are open to time to pay arrangements at the moment. So I think it's something that you know, particularly everyone should be considering you know, sort of during, during this time period. 
Okay. And, and so as, as a business owner, anything else that, that, you know, is potentially available to us? Yeah, we've got the uh, business interruption loans. Um, how easy and accessible they are is yet to be determined. Um, I'd advise, if you think you're going to be short of working capital, talk to your bank manager, get an application in, get it started at least. Mm. There will be um, various uh, uh, bits of data that they're going to need. So you know, talk to your accountant, start pulling that together, get your accounts done. Uh, have a look at what your current cash flow needs are. Um, don't be too prudent. Um, if you're going for a loan, you know, actually make sure you, get, you, you, you go for the right amount. Uh, what you don't want to be is caught short, you know, three weeks after a loan and thought, oh, I wish I would ask for another 20K. Mm. You know, uh, be realistic with that. Um, assume worst case scenario and work from there, you know, in essence. And what about things like personal guarantees on, on those bank loans? Well, that's, it's been in the news recently with regards to personal guarantees. And I think the general view of government is that banks shouldn't be asking for personal guarantees. I think what we'll probably find is going to be on a bank case-by-case uh, -case basis. Sure. Um, but, um, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily want to be. It'd leave a bit of bad taste in people's mouths, I think, if personal guarantees. Yeah, especially as they were bailed out in 2008, right? Yeah, it did. By, by taxpayers. Yeah. Um, what else? So, what about businesses that potentially really at the sharp end, and you know, from a cash perspective, kept very cash poor, didn't have any type of buffers in place, can't can't wait three or four weeks, let alone yeah. let alone even you know three or four days, um, that yeah. are facing the the realistic option of closing. Uh, what 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 advice could you give them? Pathways to follow, advisors to talk to. Disaster yeah. planning, what, what can we do? I mean, if, if, if you're in that sort of scenario, I think you've got to talk to your accountants, you know, talk to your business advisors. I think you've got to be doing that now. You know, if your current people can't help, give us a buzz. We're always open. We're open for business. We're working from home and we're always here to help if we can. I mean, these are really challenging times. Now, if you look to the SME market, you know, and if you just looked at those um, director shareholders who are on minimum pay, um, uh, for tax advantages, you know, why not been enjoying those for, for, for years, but actually now we're in a scenario where there's potentially not a lot of government support out there at all. Um, and, and this, you know, really sort of crucial times for, 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 those, for those firms um, because, you know, potentially there's no, no cash coming in at all and we're not going to get any, any government grants despite the fact that we've been paying a lot of corporation tax and you know, a lot of that and exactly all the risk. Of personal tax for the last, last sort of few years. So, but in those sort of scenarios, you know, talk to your accountants, have a look what reserves you've got left in the company. How can we get those out efficiently? Um, where does our exposure sit? Is there any personal guarantees that the company's uh, being caught with? Uh, existing personal guarantees that need to be managed out in any sort of scenario. Speak to an IP firm, a consulting practitioner firm. If you can't get hold of the accountants, you need a little bit of advice because they're out there too who are helping, these, who are helping through. Personally, look at your own finances, talk to your mortgage company. You know, we are hoping that actually once we get through this, it will be back to business as usual. You know, how quickly that happens and how quickly we get back to business as usual you know, is you know, up, up in the air. But you know, if we can uh, keep as much cash as possible, defer out some payments, take some holidays as and when we can, uh, try and apply for uni universal credit even, although you've probably been in the queue with another million people who have already done the same sort of thing, um, then I think that's, that's, that's all we can do at this stage. Turn your phone off. Yeah, sorry. That's Rookie the... error. Come on, Dan. No, it's fine. That's real smart. Is it? Well, yeah. we'll, we'll blame Will. Um, yeah. Okay, so, and you said you raised thing about mortgage uh, uh, payment holidays, so that's three months, right? So uh, people can take a three-month payment holiday subject to the bank agreeing to it. I think a lot of banks are now doing online applications that, that, that yeah, are fast, yeah. fast, track, fast track through. I know I've got a number of clients who've done that um, just yeah, yeah. for the simple purpose of just further increasing their cash buffer. Um, so, um, so yeah, very, very prudent. I think what, what, what one of my takeaways from this, and I think there's going to be some, some um, uh, sort of deep learning from both sort of private investors and savers, but also business owners, is uh, cash buffers. 
um, and the, the the real need to ensure. I mean, we always advise as a firm of financial planners to, to personally have at least three to six months worth of net salary uh, in, in in a sort of sleep easy disaster fund for moments exactly like this, where potentially redundancies kick in or there's a reduction in income, and so before you need to start worrying about credit cards or going for you know government grants or anything like that, you've already got the reserve there to, to last half a year. Um, you know, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. So I think hopefully, certainly with the clients I, I'm working with, it's not less, not so much a problem um, because a lot of them have it in place. But I think yeah. for, for most of the UK population, hopefully there'll be some really good learning that's actually you need to, you need to yeah. delay gratification, stop spending money on shit that you don't need, make sure you've got your cash buffer in place so that if this happens again, which it will, because on average these types of events happen on six or seven years on average. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while since 2008, but yeah, that, that you're ready and prepared. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's right. Keep, keep that in reserve. You know, sometimes in the, in the business, a good rule of thumb, if you can do it, is have, you know, working capital reserves of around three to six months. You know, not everyone can do that. Appreciate that. Sure. If you can do it, do it, if you don't want to leave. Um, and have, a, have that sort of plan in place. You know, have, that, have those working uh, capital cash flows, you know, just to hand it. It's good practice, you know, see what it looks like. So... Yeah, you know, when you get to situations and scenarios like this, you know you can you can do some planning around it in a shorter period of time. You know. I think it. Um, you know, cl clearly we're both professional advisors, so I'm always going to say this. But but having the right team around you, whoever that is. So you know, if you if you're listening to this and you've got your own financial planner, which is great, and you've got your own firm of accountants, great. You need to make sure that they're working together and that they're working with you and are providing you advice like this. And I say that because I was chatting to a, to a very young business owner who was referred to me by a, by a big bank two years ago, a year ago. And, um, and one of the very first things I installed into him was about savings behavior and emergency buffers. And I was speaking to him last week just to catch up as I'm doing with all my clients on a weekly basis, just to make sure they're all tickety-boo. And he was like, the one thing going through my mind, Chris, was your voice saying three yeah. to six months, three to six months. Yeah. Just trust me, three to six yeah. months. And yeah. I was like, yeah, <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's the right yeah. thing to do. So, uh, you know, for, for those listening to this, yeah. you know, if you haven't got uh, a team of advisors around you, accountant, tax, legal, uh, financial planning, um, then you need to really consider putting that in place because it could be the difference between success and failure ultimately, right? Yeah, I mean, I think you've got it spot on there because it's 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 um, it's more like working in partnership, you know, more than anything else. You know, it's not a case what you don't want is one touch a year because I think that's bad. That's bad advice. One touch a year, you've got to know your client. You know, you've got to know them well, not just the business, but you know what they want personally as well. So you can tailor your services to help them. You know, um, that's that's the real sort of key to it, and that's where the enjoyment comes from as well. You know, that's a really big part of the business, you know, an offer of support. You can offer guidance and you can be proactive, you know, rather than, you know, maybe firefighting or, you know, reacting to something after date. You know, I always think that's, I always think it's poor form if you've told someone, for example, oh, your tax is 30K and it's due next week. I mean, what you should be saying is your tax is 30K and it's due in 2022. You know, it's that sort of level of, you know, sort of forecasting the knowledge that you want to get into. Yeah, future planning. So a lot of the inquiries we get from, from the banks, for example, are uh, from business owners who uh, who aren't getting that type of relationship. And so you guys know this because I've passed the referrals on. They're, they're working with all the accountants who they hardly see, you know, certainly the, 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 the newer businesses that they weren't made aware of how personal tax regime works. Yeah. Uh, you know, January, July splits through to VAT, through to corporation tax. And these are basic things that, that you know, a professional and a forward thinking professional should be delivering. So, yeah, no, I, I highly endorse that. Um, so I think, Dan, I'm going to start pulling this to a close because we're sort of 23 minutes in. Um, we've, we've had a good gas bag about Cottons. And so just to repeat, Cottons are based in Northampton, Town Centre, Daventry, Rugby, uh, are branching off into Milton Keynes, uh, Silverstone, and clearly the Silverstone Technology Cluster. And you've also got a, an office down in London, uh, actually near our London office, which is great. Uh, business owners of all different sizes as well as uh, individual taxpayers that need self-assessment advice and stuff like that. I endorse Cottons because I refer quite a few clients to Cottons and, uh, and vice versa. So I highly endorse uh, Cottons for those listening to this. Um, 
clearly for any more uh, support and guidance on COVID uh, government backed initiatives. If you haven't got confidence in um, the team of accountants that you're currently working with, then Dan's available. So I'll make sure his contact details are in the show notes so people can find you. Uh, I'm going to make sure this is aired on STC's website and on YouTube. So, because uh, obviously it's very, very present at the moment. So, clearly, anybody needs any support, let us know. Uh, I'm going to close off, Dan. What's normally traditional after we've had a good, positive, fun podcast interview is I want to embarrass you a bit. And so, I always close off with two questions. The first is the embarrassing one, which is about you sharing an embarrassing story. Okay. And this is important, Dan, because you're probably going to have colleagues listening to this. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, and fellow partners, including a uh, certain Will Smart. So what is your embarrassing story that you're prepared to share with our wonderful listeners? Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I, I don't get embarrassed that easily, to, to be fair. But okay. one, one lesson that I've got in life is never trust a four-year-old <laughs> around a button. And, and, I, and I say that from, uh, we did a trip to France, and um, we were on a, on a ferry going over. And uh, little one, four at the time, needed the toilet. So we go to toilet on, on the ferry, right opposite, big gangway of gallery of chairs. So we're sitting in there, well, I might as well go while we're here as well. Um, little man's walking around the toilet. Dad, what's this red button? Don't... Oh, no. I think that says it all, doesn't it? Oh, no. You know? Oh, no. Then, then from someone who was so eager to press the button, to then want to press it again, not interested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. How embarrassing. Presumably a few people saw you, right? Yeah, just a, just a couple of hundred. That's just a couple of hundred people on the yeah. uh, that's the beginning of their holiday. Was beginning. That's a nice, I like to think it was a nice treat for them. Nice. Yeah, nice little anecdote for them. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah, right, so. Last question, sir. Life yeah. advice. So we know we have students listening to this um, yeah. that, that are studying at local tech colleges, and universities and what have you in the region. Um, so life advice for a, a younger version of Dan Roberts. So let's let's take us back to when you weren't working at Cottons and you're going through uni or finishing university off. What one bit of key advice would you give yourself and why? Uh, I, I think... Um, an important value in life, and this, this, so this is for work and this is for everything else really, is just to have some integrity. Integrity in yourself and in beliefs and what you're interested in. You know, actually, if you follow that, you're respectful, you know, hardworking, you know, truthful, be honest. You know, and actually, that will stand you in good stead. Not only in business, but personally. Um, and it's, you know, it's key fundamental to me. It's key fundamental to Cottons. Um, so that's what I would tell any young person out there. Who, who would like to listen, you know, have some integrity. Be a good egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be a good egg. Dan Roberts from Cottons, thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate your, uh, you giving up sort of 20, 30 minutes, especially when you're obviously bombarded with a lot of client work at the moment. So we do appreciate that. As no, I said, I'm going to put your contact details in the show notes. So if anybody wants to reach out to Dan and get any advice, uh, I'm sure he'll make himself available to do that. Um, what I'm also going to do, Dan, is invite you back on in the future to do a sort of collaborative uh, sort of mastermind session with a few other professional advisors. Um, I think there's more in this conversation around COVID and business continuity and we're in it together, not alone. Mentality. Yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so, um, so I'll have a think about who else we can invite to that and uh, we'll have them. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks a lot, Chris, for having us on. Cool. And, uh, everyone keep safe. Speak to you soon, sir. Thanks, guys. Thanks. The Inside Silverstone podcast is produced by the team at Longhurst for the benefit of those with a passion for all things tech, engineering, and innovation. For more information, please visit longhurst.co.uk forward slash Inside Silverstone, whilst also remembering to give us a five out of five star rating on iTunes. Please note that neither Chris Broom or Longhurst work for Silverstone Park, Silverstone Circuit or Silverstone Technology Cluster.